Well, many of you know who have watched my off week videos, usually I post them on Tuesday, I call them after work projects. You've seen this old Forerunner. It's an 87 Toyota Forerunner. And it's kind of my bomb around. You can tell it's not the fanciest. You know, the paint's kind of gone off of it. And, but to me, it's a no big deal. This is my $500 special. That's all I paid for it. And I've had it for, I think, about maybe 18 years now. I haven't done a lot to it. When I bought it, the owner thought that maybe it had 300,000 miles on it at the time. It doesn't show that on the odometer, but he said the odometer was broken for a while, and he ran it as a commute vehicle from Joliet to Billings for a number of years. Well, he moved to Florida and didn't want the expense of driving it down there. So he put a for sale sign in it, talked to him, and bought it for 500 bucks. I haven't done a lot to it. I've put tires on it. It does drink a little oil, so I just keep filling it up and I just run this rascal. So anyway, it's become kind of my farming outfit. You've seen me do fencing in it and I use it as a uh, running parts, that type of deal. It's getting to be a little weak in the back end. Uh, a year ago, last summerish sometime, I put a, a set of shock absorbers all the way around it, but it tends to bottom out pretty easily with any kind of a bump and when I'm a lot of off-road it's always bottoming out. Well I have about two inches of clearance from that bumper to my frame. So a few weeks ago I started to disassemble these springs because I was going to run them through my tire roller and re-arch them. I've done that to a number of vehicles especially when they're older ones. Well, I got into this part way and saw that the springs are riveted together at a couple different places. And I was having some struggle getting the shackle bolts out of the framework. So what I did is I bought a new set of springs and some new bolts. So this time I'm going to see if I can get them apart. And instead of re-arching them, I'm just going to put new springs under this and see if we can't get this to where it doesn't bottom out every little pothole in the road. So before I start to do anything, I'm just going to measure my bumper. From the ground up, I've got 19 inches from my bumper to the ground. New springs, as I read about them, are supposed to lift at least another two inches. I'm going to see if I can get that possibly a little more. When I measure from the top of my tire to the bottom of my fender well here, you know, I've got about eight inches on the front end, but on the back end, I've got maybe four and a half, four, four and a half is all. It really sets down on the back end. Now back and forth feeding cows all winter, I did get this buried once. It was really buried in high center, so I tend to chain up the front end. So I have plenty of clearance for my front end for chains, but I don't in the back. So there are times that I would probably chain this up all the way around. Normally the front end is good, but for my clearance, I would like to bring this back up, give myself a, more, a little more clearance, plus give me a little more load capacity without bottoming out on every bump. Oh, I just get this jacked up and I'll get the axle blocked so I can get the two rear tires off the ground. My fancy block system is I've got some four inch thick ash blocks and I've got it blocked up to where I have both tires that should be clear. I can take them off. Now these might be metric. I'm using a 13 sixteenths, a little snug. And this is a bumper on my axle along mounted to my springs and my bumper block on the frame. I bet I don't have maybe inch and a half here. Maybe about an inch and a half clearance. 
And as we look at these springs, there's not a lot of arch to them anymore. They're sitting pretty flat. So these are the new springs that I've got to go on in replacement. And you can see they have much more arch to them than my old worn out ones I have. Well, I've got the nut off of this back shackle, but it looks like I'm going to have to remove my spare tire in order to get in to try to drive this bolt out. In all my 18, 19 years of owning this rig, I've never had this spare tire out. I've never had a flat. Well, I'm guessing now is probably good a time as any to even find out where my jack is. Must be underneath one of these side panels. See, so yeah, I've never had it out. Well, there's the jack. There's something here. If that's the jack handle or what? Suppose it's a lot better to do it in here, under cover in the shop, the weather is decent, than in a snowstorm. Some kind of tire iron, not sure what this is. I don't think this has ever been used. Maybe that might show a little sign of use. That and this rod and this handle. Looks like this is the access hole to the mechanism that holds the tire up. Oh, there we go. It's years of dust and crud on this thing, huh? Wow. Well, I've got the rear shackles unbolted. I don't have them released yet. I have the one side played off. This is the left side. And so this is the right side that I also have off. You can see I have it started to be driven out. But before I take them out, I need to take the weight of the body off so I'm going to come up underneath the rear bumper and lift this up to release the tension off of the springs. I'm not sure just how far I'll have to go. I started out at 19 and I'm at 26. So it went up seven inches. Well, this is the front shackle. I've got the back ones off. This one, however, I can't break loose. I've been soaking it with PB Blaster. I've had my air impact on it. Started hammering on this end and it just won't come loose. The other side has a gas tank right up against on the inside and there's no way I can get in and try to hammer that out and put my impact on it and it won't break it loose either. So I guess last resort I'll have to saw it off on either side of this spring eye and just put a new bolt in. <laughs> There 
there's that side. Got any blade left? Ah, too bad. So with both of my ends loose, now I should be able to get this whole spring out of here. Well, this is my old spring and you can tell this new spring is quite a little bit heavier on this old original there's three leaves here and this new one has four and the overloads on this new one has a double spring where this original is just a single this is supposed to add about a two inch lift over these original springs I got my spring hooked up to my rear shackles and now because of my extra leaves in here I'm about an inch short with these two extra leaves on my u-bolts down here we're a little short coming through so I'm gonna have to get a u-bolt that's about an inch longer at least and then my front spring bolt I'm gonna have to get a replacement for it they need to be about 9 16 I'm sure they're probably metric, whatever's close to that. So I've put just a half inch grade 8 in there just to hold it into place. I won't leave that there. It needs to have an insert into this new bushing. But that'll just hold it into place for the moment. But that gets my new leaves in position. This is the bumper block. And like I say I'll put some new U-bolts on it. But I think it's going to work. Well, I did go into Billings to TNT spring and machine and they made me some square top U-bolts that are another inch and a half longer. So those are going to work for that. While I was there, I also visited with them about the front bolt that goes through the eye on this spring. The new bushings look like this and you can see that I have one in there. So a couple different options were, this is a 18 millimeter bolt and they said I could just drill this out and run an 18 millimeter through there. Their suggestion, however, was to put a shim roller through here, also an 18 mil. Then that'll take a half inch bolt and I cut this to lengths where this shim roller will come out flush on either end. And they suggested that would be a good way to go because it would add an extra roller surface in there and take some of the wear off of this neoprene bushing. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put this bushing in there and then I'll put a half inch grade 8 bolt to hold it all together. Step, kind of suck up these U bolts. Uh, looked them up. These 916 U bolts are supposed to have about 75 pounds of torque. Back up. Let's see what we ended up with here. Yeah, I'm gonna see if I can lift it up, get it off the blocks. That'll work. Set her down. Well, before, what was I, 19 inches? Now I'm at 25 and a half. Wow. So I had four and a half inches in here before. 
Now I'm at nine. At least mentally, it's going to be quite an adjustment for me to see the difference how this thing sets. This set so low in the back end for so long, I'm not going to know what to think. Made quite a difference. Now it actually sets up like it's supposed to. So you know when I had to cut those two front spring bolts, it kind of complicated the project a little bit. Would have been simple if the metal bushings for the neoprene bushings had come with the kit, with the springs, but they didn't. So I was shop to shop trying to find where these little bushings were and get all that to fit and what all. So I got it all done and I was within about an hour of taking it down off the blocks and rolling it out. Guess what showed up? The bushings. I guess, I guess they were back ordered. I don't know. I, so now I have two extra bushings. Anyway, it's nice to see this up and where it should be again. So it'll be more reliable when I'm out doing my fencing projects. Appreciate you following along.